okay. All right, let's do 63 and let's see if we can double back to 12. Thank you, I just missed that. All right, so 63. Uh, Councilmember Tova, you want to make a motion? Then we'll go to Councilmember sure. uh, Alice, who pulled it. Yeah, I'm going to move approval. Thank you. Is there a second to uh, the motion to approve 63? Uh, Councilmember Renteria makes the motion. I mean, second. Um, Councilmember Alice, do you, you pulled this? I did. Thank you, Mayor. And I have circulated an amendment. Um, and I would like to read it, and if I need to make a motion and get a second before explaining it, I'm happy to do that. Uh, but the amendment would read, the city manager is directed to provide recommendations to mitigate the impacts to affordability of these water forward strategies. The recommendation, recommendations shall be developed with stakeholder input and brought back to council for consideration in conjunction with implementation of the above strategies. And that would just be yeah, added, right. be it resolved at the end. An amendment by council member Ellis. Is there a second to this amendment? The uh, uh, mayor pro tem seconds it. Now you can explain it, council member Ellis. Thank you, mayor. Um, I want to say thank you to council member Tovo for supplementing the work of the Austin Water Oversight Committee captured in this item 65 resolution by bringing this one as well. And I appreciate the work that you've done on water forward throughout the years. At the most recent water oversight meeting, we discussed the critical importance of implementing water forward given the pressing urgency of climate change. Maximizing water conservation and reuse is our best line of defense against the next hard drought and the one after that and the one after that. At the same time we confront this climate crisis, we also know our city is exper experiencing an affordability crisis. Housing costs have never been higher and are rising at staggering rates. The Austin Board of Realtors shared this week with all of our offices that the median Austin single family home price has risen by a third, 32% since this time last year, and now exceeds $550,000. And I'm sure many of you saw KUT's recent report that average Austin rent prices, which fell during the beginning of the pandemic, are once again shooting up and are now the highest they've been in years. The result of this will be displacement of our neighbors whose wages just can't keep up with the rent hikes, fewer young families who, who can afford to buy a first home, more of our seniors who struggle to age in place, and for some, those who may have been hanging on to the lowest rungs of our housing ladder, homelessness might be the result. My hope and intent is that staff will work with a range of stakeholders on these recommendations, including the Water Forward Task Force, as is already mentioned in the resolution, but also community and industry stakeholders as well, who could offer firsthand knowledge of the likely affordability impacts and provide input on potential mitigation strategies. I appreciate and agree with the comments made by Bobby Levinsky earlier today that the components of Water Forward will help with affordability in the long run. I would also like to add that evaluating options to mitigate the upfront cost to home builders that they would only then pass on to the tenants would add to the affordability of these policies and ensure we don't lose potential housing options as our population grows. The language in this amendment mirrors an amendment I made to the water oversight resolution that council member Kitchen had drafted, um, which was incorporated in that one. So we had passed that earlier today. Okay. Discussion on the amendment, council member Tobo. Thank you. So I have um, a variety of things I wanna say, but before I do, I would like to clarify that uh, I did I did do some um, cleanup of the resolution, and so when I made my motion to move approval of this item, it was version two, which was distributed earlier today, and there's not any substantial uh, substantive changes in it, just some edits. Um, so we, we did have an opportunity to talk about this a little bit at um, the Water Committee. Um, I guess, Council Member uh, um, Ellis, I wanna start by just asking you how your process that you're describing differs from the one laid out in the water forward implementation plan. It's not that there's much difference. I just think it's important to be mentioned in the resolution to make sure our intent is clear. Okay, so I, I did distribute, thank you for that. I think um, if that's the intent, then I, I hope that you will be okay with my amendments that I've made to your amendment and these were distributed at 6.03, I think. Um, let me just look. 
Yes, 603, I distributed an amendment to your amendment. So the water forward, um, the water forward plan, and I have been involved with it, thanks for acknowledging that. Um, I actually did the resolution that created, that created the group to develop the integrated water resource plan, and I'll talk a little bit about why that was necessary here in a minute, and then, and then carried forward um, some of the other resolutions necessary to get water forward approved by council. And the water forward plan includes an implementation, very detailed implementation process, all of which includes stakeholder Thank participation. You. So in addition to the stakeholder participation that made up the original integrated water resource plan that became named water forward, there's also in the implementation plan listed out um, stakeholder processes. And I think it's on page four, it starts on page 487 of the water forward plan. And I think it, I, I believe it, it will address um, the concern that you raise. I want to also say that, you know, the reason it became necessary to have a, a, I mean, there are multiple reasons why it became necessary to have water forward. One of them was we were in a very significant drought and the staff were, um, well, there was discussion in the community about, and I think possibly some research on staff's part about looking to other other resources, other water resources, and that was going to be pretty costly. And, and not only would it be costly, it would also mean potentially taking water away, entering into agreements that um, with other communities to get water from their sources. And so I really wanna be careful about the language we use regarding affordability, which is why I have I have suggested amendments to yours. And frankly, I would have been more comfortable moving forward um, the resolution from the water committee that we, that we approved earlier with this additional language as well, because I think it is so clear that we send, it's so important to send a clear message to the community when we're using terms like affordability. But I also wanna say there's a pretty big difference between what we approved earlier and what we're doing here. This is, my resolution is saying, take a look at Take a look at some of the elements from the water forward plan, look at the timetable and come back and let us know which of these should proceed on a faster timetable. We're not initiating any of these um, programs here today. That's different from what we approved earlier. So it, there's just a fundamental difference in what we're sending forward. So I'm not even entirely sure that it's, it's appropriate to say bring back affordability analysis, but if, if there is language to that effect, I would suggest it read as I've, as I've described in my amendment to the amendment, because the fact is that, you know, a lot of these strategies are going to be cost savers. Um, they are going to save money in the long run for users of, of, our, of our water, um, whether they're tenants or property owners. And so while there are upfront costs to this infrastructure, it is going to benefit it, it will likely benefit. Um, and part of the intent is that it benefit in terms of bringing down costs for users down the road. And that I've tried to capture that in my language. I, I, my concern about your language is that it presupposes that all the impacts to affordability are bad impacts, that it makes it more expensive. And I don't believe that's the case. And I don't think that's consistent with, with water forward. Um, the other real fact is the one that, that gave rise to, to the whole all of this work, which is that securing additional water rights for our city to go forward and secure those additional water rights could be quite costly for all of our customers. And so again, I think, I think the whole point of, one of the main points of the Water Forward Plan was to, to mitigate against those higher costs of having to invest in, in additional water supply. So I'll read it out for the public just um, because it, it, I don't think it's posted on the message board quite yet, but it would, um, just capture, um, instead of saying, go have a stakeholder, it just simply, it simply captures what is the case, which is that the water flowered implementation plan details a process that includes piloting strategies, collecting information about costs and conducting stakeholder input that informs program development and the city manager is directed to follow this process rather than suggest where we're now going to conduct a stakeholder process where one didn't exist because that, that just isn't accurate. Um, and then it asks the city manager shall re 
prepare a report analyzing the potential impacts to affordability for these water forward strategies, as well as recommendations to enhance affordability along with their implementation. Any recommendations related to affordability shall consider the long-term benefits of reducing bills for water customers, costs associated with securing additional water supply and other relevant considerations. I just think that's more, um, more descriptive of what we would really want to analyze. So that's, um, that is my amendment to yours. Thank you for, for the conversation. Council Member Kitchen. Yeah, I just want to say that um, I'm hearing this um, and I'm hearing if I've got it correct, Council Member Ellis's intent and your intent, Council Member Tovo, to, to, you know, just to emphasize that, uh, that the uh, water forward implementation plan process has a stakeholder process as part of it, you know, as part of piloting strategies, collecting information about cost and conducting stakeholder input. And that's part and parcel of several steps along the way for water forward. And that was part of the conversation that I think we had at the committee um, that, um, and so this is helpful to emphasize it, which I think I hear what council member Ellis is, is doing. So, um, so I just to emphasize that. And I think that's, that's in line with, what um, the uh, Director Marsaris and the uh, water uh, staff let us know at the committee. So I, I can support your language that you have and appreciate Councilmember Ellis emphasizing that aspect of the Water Forward Plan. Colleagues, Councilmember Ellis. Thank you. Um, and I certainly do appreciate the conversation. Um, I would be more comfortable with my language. Um, if it doesn't have the support to go in as is, there might be some, some tweaks that I can recommend to Councilmember Tovo's amendment, to my amendment, to Councilmember Tovo's resolution. Um, but I think it is important to have a conversation that includes stakeholders that are, are looking at both angles of it. So it is about making sure that we have enough water and water that we can access affordably um, throughout the years, it's also important to understand the upfront cost. You know, we've, we've talked a little bit today about it, it is more cost effective in the long run and it is much better for the environment. But if you can't get to the starting line, how are we accomplishing these goals? And so I just want to make sure that some of that upfront cost, if there's anything that council needs to make decisions on to make sure that more people can participate in this without affecting the ability of people to supply housing in our community, I think that we should be looking at those angles. So I just want to make sure that it is going to stakeholders that care about water resources, but also stakeholders that know what it's like to build this infrastructure and to make sure that that part of the conversation is being had as well. Okay, so that we're moving forward in a good way, we have an amendment on the floor from Council Member Ellis. Council member Tovo moves an amendment to the amendment. Is there a second to the Tovo amendment to the amendment? Council member Kitchen. Let's hear from some of the people who haven't had a chance to speak yet. Council uh, mayor pro tem. Thank you, mayor. I appreciate being recognized. I was just gonna say, I, I, I think what I'm hearing council member Ellis say is that our concern is, an, is not about current residents per se, it's about people moving in. Um, and so it, it, please forgive me if I'm, if I'm not catching this um, accurately, but the cost savings is for um, new residents. And so, um, and then the other thing that I, that I think I'm hearing is that we just wanna make sure that the recommendations are done holistically. Um, and so I, I'm, if, if, if I'm understanding what's being presented correctly, then I think I'm, I'm happy to support uh, Council Member Ellis's direction. I'm proud that, you know, as a city, we led the way when it comes to environmental sustainability and green development. And, you know, Water Forward is another one of those examples uh, of that commitment. I, I do often think about those trade offs, though, you know, uh, sometimes the additional measure, measures come with additional cost. And those uh, on those developments, that gets passed on to the purchaser. Um, and so that's one of those unintended affordability impacts that I do um, worry about. And so 
I'm, I'm happy to support Council Member Ellis's amendment. Council Member Rodgersar, then Council Member Poole. I, in listening to the conversation, I'm having trouble getting a sense of what the actual impact is of one amendment versus the other. It would be really helpful for me in trying to, to land this to know what is what the key things are that are in a difference or in dispute like what the dip what will be the actual different outcome of one versus the other because the language seems to have some emphasis differences but i don't think that necessarily causes a difference can some it would be really helpful for me to know what will happen with one version versus the other that's different council member tobo yeah, if she can answer like as a report i recognized question. you next do you want to let council member tobo reply council member tobo Thanks. So there are two parts to Councilmember Ellis's amendment. One is that the recommendation shall be developed with stakeholder input and brought back to Council for consideration in conjunction with implementation of the above strategies. So again, they have been developed with stakeholder input. All I'm doing is saying, task force, take a look at the schedule and come back to us and let us know if we should change the schedule. And, and my other point is that the implementation plan includes stakeholder input. And, and I think it's important to acknowledge this isn't a new direction. People spent a lot of time making sure that stake, if you look at page 487, you'll see that at every one of these recommendations, there is a very, dis, dis, there is a very detailed process that includes stakeholder implementation, stakeholder input. Sometimes it's a pilot and then cost collection so that they're really collecting those costs. Several of the water forward strategies have moved forward in this way where we're piloting it, we're collecting costs, then we're coming back and getting stakeholder input about those costs and then thinking about how to tweak the program going forward. I mean, all of this is very, very clear. I guess I think I, here, I can go on to the second point that she's making, but I would like to pause there and ask Director Mazaros um, just to verify that I'm representing it accurately, that the intent of the implementation plan for Water Forward has stakeholder input built in throughout. Hello? Director yes, Mazzaro? Yes, um, yeah, yes, our, uh, our water forward process includes uh, significant stakeholder involvement as we're working on land development codes. And uh, we often uh, have recommended, as is an example of on-site reuse for large developments, that we start off with voluntary programs that provide incentives so we can uh, learn more about the technologies and approaches and better factor out cost. Uh, affordability is a balance between uh, sometimes upfront costs and long-term benefits. Uh, and, uh, and I think you know, we tried to factor those out and include that in the analysis and recommendations uh, to the council. And so I have, a, I have a couple things to ask about the affordability, um, especially with regard to the equity and affordability plan that I know one of your staff members talked about. But so the reason that I, that I have suggested a change to the language Council Member Ellis put forward is because it, it sounds as if the recommendations are going to be developed with stakeholder input, and that's been the intent all along. And so I'm, I'm comfortable saying what I said, the Water Forward Implementation Plan details a process that includes you know, a variety of steps, including stakeholder input, and, and the city manager is directed to follow this process. That, that I'm comfortable with, and I can address the affordability piece here in a minute. Well, Hold on, Council Member Ellis, you want to speak to that? I did, and Council Member Tobo, I really appreciate your puppy entering the screen from time to time. <laughs> it's always nice to see, <laughs> always nice to see pets show up. Um, I, I think, I think um, if you want to have your amendment, I might just offer a couple tweaks so that it includes your language, but says shall consider both the long-term benefits of reducing bills for water customers, costs associated with securing additional water supply and other relevant considerations, as well as the immediate costs of new requirements that can raise the price of residential and commercial spaces. So if you'd be accepting I hope you can still hear me. If you'd be accepting of kind of balancing out the back half to include your points, but also incorporate that added language um, about the upfront costs. Would you, read your language? would you read your language again? Councilmember Alice, more slowly. So it would 
Her first uh, statement would stay the same in her edit. And then the second one would say, the city manager shall provide recommendations to mitigate the impacts to affordability of these water forward strategies. Any recommendations related to affordability shall consider both, I would change that word, both the long-term benefits of reducing bills for water customers, costs associated with securing additional water supply and the other relevant, consider and other relevant considerations as well as the immediate cost of new requirements that can raise the price of residential and commercial spaces in the near term. So if you'd be accepting of me adding, tacking that last part of a sentence on, I could be comfortable with the way you have reworded things. I'm sorry, I still haven't completely caught the exact language. I mean, I think what you're talking about is the upfront costs of the infrastructure. And so if you're if that's really the point, I would suggest that we say just that, the costs associated with securing additional water, water supply, the upfront costs of such infrastructure and other relevant considerations. I think that captures it. And I wouldn't switch to both just because we don't have two, we have multiple here, but um, I, I. The upfront costs of. Such infrastructure or. Mm -hmm. And other relevant so it would add the words after water supply comma the upfront costs of such infrastructure comma and other relevant and then continuing on I, I think that would reach what i'm trying to get at great okay. i appreciate it thank you does anybody have any objection to incorporating accepting the tovo amendment to the amendment with the change just stated Hearing none, that amendment to the amendment with that change now has been approved. That gets us to the item 63 as, uh, uh, as amended. Any further discussion? We still have one more item after this, item 12. That's our pool. Yeah, just really quick. Um, part of the conversation that we had last week at the Water Oversight Committee with regard to costs of big infrastructure uh, projects similar to our um, big vote last November on Project Connect. Yes, when we make big changes, transformational changes, there are costs uh, more immediate. Um, and then we all kind of glide on the long-term benefits of them. And that's just part of kind of how these, these programs work and these projects work. So I appreciate everybody's concern about um, getting the wording right. I think we've, we've got there. Uh, we weren't able to get there last week, but I'm glad we got there uh, today. And I appreciate um, Council Member Tovo's continued long-term work on Water Forward and her awesome staff for the work that they have done uh, in particular and um, look forward to voting for this item. Okay. And Morgan, you got that amendment okay? I think it's I think pretty we have it. All and right, thank good. You, Mayor, Let's take a vote. Thank you to Councilmember Poole for recognizing my staff because Shannon Halley is tremendous on this issue and has done tremendous work over the years, both for the water utility as well as for my. And let's take a vote on 63. Those in favor, please raise your hand. Those opposed, I'm showing that as unanimous. 